Steve Adubato, PhD. Dr. Roger A. Mitchell, Jr., Northern Regional Medical Examiner, New Jersey Office of the State Medical Examiner. Good to see you, Doctor. It's good to be here. You're here to talk to us about uh, what you see in your work every day in connection with uh, the abuse of prescription drugs. Uh, by the way, describe your work. You perform autopsies. Yeah, um, we're part of the Office of the State Medical Examiner. I run the Northern Region, which is Essex, Hudson, Passaic, and Somerset County. Uh, we do all death investigations, and that's non-natural deaths, um, deaths that might be accident, homicides, suicides, or undetermined, fall under the jurisdiction of the medical examiner throughout the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Now, we met in cooperation with an initiative, the uh, Do No Harm Conference. We were doing it. Uh, American Medicine Chest, our partners for it with the uh, Partnership for Drug Free New Jersey, right. met you at that conference, and we had a very candid conversation about the seriousness of this uh, problem regarding prescription drugs. That's right. How bad is the problem, and what do you see when it's way too late and people are dead lying on a cold slab? Well, the problem is is vast, um, and and we're talking primarily about the prescription abuse problem. Um, 10% of the cases that we see that come into our office, we have about 7,000 cases that come into the office statewide. Mm. 7,000 cases. Of those 7,000 cases, about 1,000 of them are drug abuse deaths. And that's the combination of both illicit, common heroin, cocaine, mm. um, and uh, a combination of prescription, and primarily oxycodone. 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 That is the primary. Yes. Yeah, so, so let me explain. So, 700 of these deaths um, are prescription drug deaths. 700 of the 1,000 deaths Got it. are prescription that's drug a high deaths. Number. It's a high number, and that's across the state, right? So, 50% of the, that 700, close to 50%, 48%, are ox, have oxycodone in in the blood or urine of the individual Why? dying because they're taking it. What is that? Oxycodone is a semi-synthetic, synthetic opioid. It is heroin in a pill. It is a pain reliever. It relieves pain. Um, but when abused, it can bind to the brain, brainstem primarily, and trick the brain to think that it has enough oxygen when it doesn't. Um, and pretty much, you become somnolent, Who's hard to arise, you, you're sleepy. Mm. You become sleepy, hard um, to 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 arise out of that sleep. You start snoring, and then there's death. So, sixty nine percent of all prescription drug, excuse me, sixty nine percent of all drug deaths are prescription drug deaths. And we were when we were at Hackensack University Medical Center that day, and we were having this discussion. One of the things that struck me is that when we engaged the physicians at the Do No Harm conference up there that day. And you're smiling because you know where I'm going. I, I do. I do. I asked the physicians because there's a statewide initiative where physicians can actively participate. The name of that program. The, the prescription monitoring program. The prescription monitoring okay. program. Follow me on this, folks. The state has a whole range of programs here. It's called the uh, prescription monitoring program. It's and consumer affairs. Consumer affairs. And it's not mandatory. No, it's not. It's voluntary by physicians and pharmacists. Physicians and pharmacists can voluntarily be involved. And I asked this group of physicians, right? They were from all over the place, right? right. They all happened to Jersey. gather at Hackensack. That's right. And I said, how many? And it was a, not a very high number. And then I started asking, well, why aren't you involved? And people got very uncomfortable. That's right. That's right. What'd you take from that? Well, because you need physicians to be involved because they do what for these patients? If they know there's a problem, what should they be doing? So if there's a problem with, with individuals uh, abusing drugs, um, then they have the opportunity to get them the treatment that they need, right? So what the prescription monitoring program does is it allows for physicians and pharmacists to I identify when prescription drugs are being averted right. or when they're being overused or abused. Um, averting is being able to take them and then selling them on right. an outside market and um, obviously the abuse is self-explanatory. And so when a physician becomes aware of that, then their prescription um, writing practice may change to that particular patient. They may help that patient identify how they can get help for their drug abuse problem. You see, Steve, drug abuse is, is, is a public health issue. 
Um, and that's why it's important to have conversations surrounding this issue with physicians and practitioners. But, but, but doctor, you, your colleagues, you saw them across the board from hospitals throughout this region in, in, pra, in, in, in specialties across every possible area saying, no, I'm not participating. Some of them thought that if they did, they would be potentially at risk and dealing with law enforcement, at risk with dealing with drug addicts, where they didn't want to find themselves or their staff exposed. Well, again, are we all in this thing together or we, not? We, we are. We are in this thing together, and, and, and to defense of my colleagues, yes. it's, it's, it's a very hard um, process to en engage a patient and um, uh, have a real conversation with them about their drug addiction. And, and why is that? Is because really there's a stigma. There's still a sure. stigma surrounding drug addiction and mental health related issues. Absolutely. Um, and we really need to have conversations about destigmatizing that particular issue. A bigger discussion? A bigger discussion about destigmatizing um, drug abuse and ensuring that we're, we're taking the step to make sure that it's spoken about in a public health context. As a disease? As a disease. As opposed to a crime. Exactly. Exactly. So the distribution may be a crime. And the even use prescription drugs, even with prescription drugs, even with prescription drugs, there are um, cases all over the country. U.S. attorney is bringing cases all over the country, holding physicians liable, criminally liable for over prescribing pill mills are all over the country. Primarily, they, they've erected in, in or been present in, mm -hmm. in Florida. Um, but they're holding people criminally liable. But this conversation is a good conversation. In May, the governor um, uh, wrote in the Good Samaritan Law. The governor of Jersey, Chris Christie. That is correct. And that's Good Samaritan the, Law, um, two minutes left, what is that? That's the Overdose um, Prevention Act that allows for medicine naloxone to be administered um, by individuals that are with people overdosing. Um, without necessarily being criminally convicted of of that of of taking drugs themselves, so it protect, protects the caller, the nine one one caller, from um, being prosecuted if they're trying to help save a life. So it's not just physicians; it's government, it's it's parents of those who may be abusing prescription drugs, it's uh, nonprofit organizations like the Partnership for Drug Free. Uh, New Jersey. It's the media. It's all of us. That's right. It's it's Project Medicine Drop, which is that's another right. consumer affairs um, where they're there. Uh, what do you do with your prescription? That's drugs? right. That's right. Um, because you got to discard them. The young people, 14 percent of all of the deaths are young people um, less than 25 years yeah. old. Right. So you have to lock these things up if you're yeah. still using them. Lock them up. And you have to discard them properly. Doctor, we'll continue this conversation. We still have. Very important work to do, but I thank you for your public service. I appreciate you. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was important. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence.